we are excited for the opportunity to share a story of not just transformation, but of foresight, agility, and audacity. This is the story of Meta's journey to be a leader that mirrors the evolution of technology itself, from the roots of compute and storage to the cutting edge frontier of generative artificial intelligence. Just a few years ago, our world was very different. Our data centers, the heartbeats of our operation were engineered for compute and storage. They powered the hypergrowth of our business, supporting an architecture designed for the needs of that time. But as horizon of technology expanded, so too did our vision. When the industry hit a critical inflection point with AI, we stood at crossroads. The path forward was uncharted, demanding not just a transformation in our infrastructure, but a revolution in our thinking. We were not content with mere adaptation. We sought to lead. My name is Saranyan Vigraham, and I am here with my friend and colleague, Benjamin Leonhardi, and together, we are going to take you through this journey. Change has never been new to us. We have always not just responded to tech shifts, but have emerged as leaders. Mobile, metaverse, data center innovations, open source. Moving fast with courage has always been our ethos. In the same spirit, we sought to transform our server fleet from compute focus to AI driven, reshaping the very foundation of our operation to not just ride the wave of generative AI, but to command it. Recently, Mark announced that Meta will have 600K GPUs by end of the year. Let's take a pause and reflect on it. 600,000 GPUs in our fleet. While such an ambition is what defines our company, it also poses a huge challenge to the entire fleet. For us to appreciate the scale of this challenge, it is useful to take a look at how our fleet of millions of servers operates today. Today, we operate in a huge varied environment with dozens of clusters, which will scale to 600,000 by the end of the year. Meta runs thousands of training jobs already every single day of various sizes, ranging from single hosts to thousands of GPUs. Our training hardware is intentionally shared with our inference hardware. This gives us massive flexibility in adapting to scaling for our business requirements, but poses a unique challenge. Half of our training jobs are classified as recurring or online, making it extremely hard to remove capacity. We are leaders in embracing forward-looking network innovations like Rocky and InfiniBand and support these in our fleet, all of which pose extremely unique challenges when scaled up. We have different networking types, huge clusters, and do interesting things like traffic shaping. On top of all this, our maintenance infrastructure operates at a cutting edge scale already, doing 1 million maintenance operations one day. That's 1 million maintenance operations one day, which has to be scaled up to accommodate AI, which has fundamentally different needs. As you can see, this is not an easy task. But how, how do we do this? First, we have to find the delicate balance of transforming our fleet without hindering our current growth. This feat alone is like rebuilding an airplane mid-flight. Then we have to deal with the tangible limits of physical space and power, constraints that bind even the most visionary companies. Think about this. Dealing with the tangible limits of physical space and power. How often do you get to work on a problem like that? We need to think of new data center designs, smartly integrating servers and GPUs, hungry for power. All these demand innovative solutions. Our previous journey in commanding tech shifts has taught us a useful lesson. We know that to build the world's largest AI supercluster, we have to think beyond our infrastructure. It is about creating an ecosystem. As in, we need to collaborate with vendors, utility companies, and partners. We have to lay the groundwork for a future where our ambitions and capabilities could expand in tandem where the ecosystem 
supports not just our growth, but the advancement of the field of generative AI itself. How do we do that? How do we build all this without our users not experiencing a hitch? We have to think of leverage first. What is available to us? Then what can we scale up and transform or metamorphize? And what needs to be built or innovate? Do you know what this is? This is the map of London Tube. Three million riders ride this system every single day. It is one billion riders every year. In 2023, there were 10 million trains disrupted, which cost the economy $1 billion, and not to mention royal travel chaos. I asked my colleague Benjamin, who is from London, and how frustrating it is when a train gets disrupted. His face lighted up, not because he loves train disruptions, but because he saw the connection between this complexity and the comp complexity of our fleet. Imagine that now you're adding a new train line. How do we pull this off without life impacting for our billions of customers? Today, we're going to take you on a journey through this transformation, exploring how we embarked on this like, journey to transform our fleet towards supporting the largest super, AI supercluster our industry has known, taking our customers along on the same journey seamlessly. Many teams at Meta are making this possible and working on different aspects of this problem. Benjamin and I will take you through what it takes to maintain such a diverse fleet and keep it healthy and safe for our customers. Over to you, Benjamin. I'm Benjamin Leon Hardy from the London Meta Maintenance team. And I want to tell you a bit about how we worked on solving some of the most interesting problems in the maintenance space in the world. Traditional companies maintain AI capacity by taking down whole clusters every couple of months, upgrading all the necessary components and bringing them back into production. However, as Saran Yang explained before, this is not really possible in Meta. Our clusters are gigantic. We have too many of them. There would be too much operational overhead, and it would be also very, very dangerous. In addition to that, Meta uses some of the most cutting-edge hardware and software. We use the newest NVIDIA training chips and other chips. We use the newest drivers to try to get the best performance and the best newest features. And that also means that we need to do a lot of maintenance on these hosts. We have multiple hours of maintenance operations every month for every AI server, over 30 different ones. One example for this, is, which may be interesting, is that we have three different types of intrusive health checks running on AI capacity. These don't only check the GPUs, but also the software stack, the RAM and other components, and they ensure that even a very large job with thousands of hosts has a consistent environment where not a single slightly slower host brings down the whole job performance. So what did we do to achieve that? We call them maintenance trains. As mentioned before, we cannot take down the whole cluster. For that, we have too much guarantees and too many different customers. Instead, we take down a small chunk of capacity at a time. We call it a maintenance domain. I do all the necessary upgrades and then move on to the next chunk of capacity until we go round, round, and round and basically upgrade every server in a circle in 30 days or some other time depending on the requirements. The maintenance team in London has been working for the last four years to build Ops Planner, a central work orchestrator. This system allows us to orchestrate and control every disruptive operation in Meta. This is not only planned operation, like these maintenances and health checks I talked about, but also unplanned operations, like remediations, repairs, provisioning jobs, and other things. Ops Planner takes all of these operations and allows them, if they do not violate any rule, makes sure they are properly serialized, ensures overlapping operations get sequenced. And at the end of an operation, it ensures hosts that are returned to production have all the necessary features that are needed, all the upgrades, drivers, components, etc. For example, if you want to maintain or remediate a network switch that shows some flapping issues, we might come 
give it to OpsPanel. OpsPanel will expand it to all the hosts in the back or in the scope of the network switch. Take down all the hosts safely, apply the necessary remediation, ensure any computing operations are serialized, and at the end of the repair, ensure that any upgrade request it missed is applied before the host is returned to production. Building that in the vast, varied environment of Meta with dozens of teams that has, has been historically grown needed a complete redesign of our infrastructure in many ways, and we had to work with lots of different teams to make it possible. However, as you can see, we have been growing immensely. We started four years ago and now are doing over a million operations a day, 90% of them being planned and 10% of them being unplanned. By and large, we have now done a billion operations, which essentially means we are not quite yet at London Tube level, but we are getting there. So what happens when we visit one of these maintenance domains? Basically, we have three phases. First, we need to safely take down capacity, move the drops, checkpoint, start them somewhere else in some of the other hosts that are available, most likely the domain that we most recently visited. Then do all of our work and at the end do safety checks and give back the hosts to production. Inside, we do hundreds or up to tens of thousands of different operations, which have different types of guarantees. We normally categorize them in gold, silver and bronze. Gold upgrades basically having a guarantee that after one cycle of the maintenance trains, every host will have this change applied. Silver upgrades providing a guarantee for multiple visits. And then bronze upgrades are best effort thing for like some of the health checks and other operations that don't really need to run everywhere, but just provide some benefit for the company. At the end, we basically guarantee that not too many hosts are broken to endanger our capacity, or we will either offboard operations or stop the train for an automatic or manual remediation. Sounds simple, but it requires some cutting edge budgeting, scheduling and other operation issues that we had to solve. AI capacity added a couple of specific problems to the whole mix. The first problem is that AI training jobs are very tightly integrated with the hardware, which means the normal recommendation and what everybody follows is that every component in the cluster on all of the hosts should be the same. So if you have one driver version on host A, host B should have the same driver version at any given time. The only way to achieve this is to take down the whole cluster. However, as we have seen before, that is not really possible in the meta environment with our gigantic cluster sometimes. So we needed to work with all of our internal teams and also external partners like NVIDIA to ensure that every lower level component can be upgraded in a rolling fashion. Meaning we have an old version, for example, driver version one and a new version, driver version two, and they need to be able to work with each other. We ensure this by running extensive tests, by fixing any issues that should come up and also rolling out capacity in a slow way by not targeting, for example, our LLM clusters before we roll them out to the rest of the capacity. The second big change that AI brought to us was diversity. Diversity in hardware, diversity in networking, lots of different topologies. We now have cooling racks beside our racks. We use InfiniBand and Ethernet. We have NVLink between some racks and we have other setups that are needed to be supported. AI backend networks don't normally have redundancy because of the performance issues. And so we need to be able to take down large chunks of capacity at a time if we want to maintain some of the backend networks as well. Without Ops Planner, that would, uh, would not have been possible. Historically, there were lots of teams impl implementing their things on their own. However, with Ops Planner, we can now take specific rules like this, build it into the system, and it will then work for all the other partners of our infrastructure and the services and the systems as well. And the third issues for AI capacity are interruptions. Jobs span thousands of hosts, and whenever one of the different tasks is interrupted, the whole job needs to restart from the last step. That's the nature of an interconnected AI job. Meta has been working how to make these restarts less costly, 
However, we have a varied environment and it's not free. So we try to avoid these interruptions as much as we can. One of the key things we did for that is a dedicated maintenance train, which has dedicated domain sizes. We do not want to have domains that are too big, because in that case, we would take out too much capacity, leaving not enough for services. But we also don't want to, them to be too small, because in that case, we would need to visit the cluster too often, interrupting the jobs as we go along. This means we had to find the golden middle, and we adopted for every cluster size as needed. In addition to that, you can find a lot of other different ideas and points in the maintenance block that will accommodate this presentation, and you can read it up about that. Now I will give it back to Saranyan for the closure. As you saw from Benjamin's talk, you can clearly see that our journey to transform our compute and storage-centric fleet to be a leader in generative AI involved redefining possibilities. This is a complex infrastructure and reshaping it on the fly is extremely challenging. Think once again of the complex London Tube, which we earlier talked about. What happens if a train gets delayed? What happens if you have to add a new train line? What happens if you have to reshape the foundational network? We did this through leveraging, metamorphizing, and innovating. We leveraged our maintenance ops planner infrastructure that was already scaled to perform a staggering million operations, million upgrades a day. We scaled up our maintenance stack by introducing flexible and fast maintenance trains. And we innovated by building not only new systems ground up, but by working with our vendors to design solutions that meet our needs. As we stand at the forefront of an AI-driven era, Meta is not just responding to changes, we are creating them. We have built more than a network of data centers. We have built a powerhouse of innovation that fuels incredible user experiences around the globe. Our commitment extends beyond our servers and AI models. We believe in building a better infrastructure that is safe and reliable and open. For us, it's about impacting lives meaningfully. Looking ahead, the path is both exciting and challenging. There are takeaways from this journey on how, with enough perseverance and vision, it is possible to lead inflection points and continue to innovate, inspire, and lead into the future. Only by transforming ourselves and reinventing, we can make the world a better place. This is a monumental inflection point, and only by working together, we can shape our world to revel in the true potential of generative AI. Please get involved, contribute to our open source community, read our blog, reach out to us. Together, we'll shape the world of AI with conviction and courage. Thank you.